to the Sex with Dr. Zen show, and my next guest is Roberto Piazza, who has a delivery, to it's a sex toy delivery service yes, on the run in the heat of the moment. What are we doing? So, right? like, how did that all happen? Like, what's up with uh, that? How did it happen? Uh, yeah, I like to know how you just create a business like that. Uh, I just came up with the idea, you know, it was just, it just seemed logical. Yeah. You know, one hour delivery, sex toys, people want them. We get them there at three by three in the morning. You wow. can get it up until three in the morning, seven days a week. Unbelievable. You don't have to shop online, although it is online, but you get it right away. Delivery service like pizza. Like pizza, exactly. Yeah. Holy yeah. mackerel. What if you're you're not satisfied and you don't get it there in thirty minutes or less? The the the, the toys free. <laughs> No, <laughs> but we do offer a lot of free gifts. So okay. if we're gonna be late, we usually fill up the bag. With What's the most popular toy that you uh, that you deliver? Well, we, we deliver a lot of uh, those baby anal toys. Yeah, anal. you know, uh, dildos. We do, uh, sell a lot of masturbators. That uh, that one menus. has like a sound to it. Like, is there some kind of like liquid <laughs> in there? It's even ribbed. No, it's uh, hollow. Yep. You, you basically... So this guys use this? Yes, you fuck it. Yeah, but how do you fuck this thing? Honestly, how? like okay, you've so... got to lubricate it first to get to yeah. get. To, to, how do you get you, it in there? Oh, I don't have any lube. I know, but you you <laughs> lube it and, and you go this. And you, and you stick your penis in and you stroke so... it. And it's all ribbed inside and it has a lot of different textures. Yep. And, so he, what about this um this lovely little? This. This looks like a bunch of little um, rotating tongues. tongues are they, yes. Is that what they are? His tongues? It is, yeah. And so, this is for her. Or this is for her, it, yeah. It could be for him, too. Uh, if he likes his... Uh, yeah, you can use it. Sure, if he wants to... Use it, on the, use it on the anal area. On the anal right? area, yeah. yeah. Around the nipples. Well, that's... You can use it... Here, turn it oh, on. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's got some nice power. Yeah, there's a, but there's a bit of strength behind that one. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, what are, what are men's, like, if men are right in the moment, in the heat of passion, and they're with their partner, like, gay partners, what, what's what's really popular for gays, gay couples? Oh, okay. Uh, here, let me show you. What the hell? Right here. Holy <laughs> shit. That thing's really scary looking, this though. This is, uh, actually, we sell a lot of these, you know, because it's one-hour delivery, and we get them, you know, seven days a week, right yeah. to their door. Yeah. Yeah. People don't like to buy a lot of these products in the store. They might be a little embarrassed. For sure, that's another thing. Yeah. But they've always wanted to try it, you know. So In because intimate. we get it to them right away, and they don't have to worry about it showing up at the door when they're at home. Gee, now or, that makes sense. Because yeah. I, when I first went into a sex store, I, I kind of was just like, didn't really, run, I was kind of embarrassed, you know. Yeah. Right. Didn't want to be seen, right? You kind of look. You put your sunglasses on. You freaking look around first. Exactly. Go to some place that's not in your exactly. neighborhood. So. Um, this was duct tape? <laughs> this is uh, play tape. You play can tie tape. Up your partner. It doesn't stick, but it sticks to itself. So it mm. won't stick to your skin. Here, yeah, oh, okay. But uh, it sticks to the tape itself. Oh, okay. So it's nice and gentle. So, yes. So exactly. your hair doesn't stick when you rip it exactly. off. Exactly. It still and holds it, nice. Yeah, it does. It's really strong. Yeah, exactly. Put it over their mouth? Yes. Yeah, maybe. You can put it anywhere you want. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do, when couples, let's say men and women, how, how important do you think it is for, for couples to, to play in the moment with toys? You know what? I, I changed my philosophy on sex toys. I really? used to think it was something like marital aids, you know what I mean? To yeah. help a marriage or to help a relationship. Yeah. But I find that most of my customers that buy sex toys are already having fun with sex. Okay. They're already playing around. They're, they're, they're buying three or four times. They're trying different products. They buy the masturbators. They buy the anal toys. They try the anal sex. They try different lotions. We have, you know, so, you know, I don't think that marital aids will save your marriage, right. you know, but I think that people who use them are actually happier. Well, they're, they're already happy already yeah. in their sex life, but they want to have these extra enhancers. Yeah, and they're just bringing more fun into the bed. It actually can bring it, the, the power higher, that whole horniness, you know, you start getting really fucking hot yeah, for your exactly. partner. Fuck, especially, like, okay, if, if I was using one and just stimulating myself, wouldn't that turn, that would, it turns your, like it would be, you don't have to throw a third person in there, but you can throw a third prop. Right? Instead of throwing the third person in there, like doing a threesome, just bring a nice big old yeah, penis like this and course. start putting it into your vagina and just like giving it to yourself and let him watch. 
Lots and, of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of fun. So, yeah. what's in this um, cylinder here? Uh, these are That's our that. suction in cans. They're uh, masturbators. Masturbators. Right? And they're very soft in texture. Yeah. And you put your penis in there and lube it up. Don't forget the lube. Got to use and, the lube. Uh, Lube's important, isn't it? So, lube is very important. Especially for women. Well, you got to get... No, men too. Especially if they're having anal sex, they need a lot of lube. Yeah, for um, sure. I'd say that uh, lube is probably sec like second most important sex toy because really the lube is what keeps it going, especially when it starts to calm down a little bit. Throw some lube in there and bang, you can start up again. And bang, wham, bam, bam. Bam, bam, thank you, man. So strap-ons. <laughs> Um, how, do you guys, do you, do you sell a lot we of strap? sell a lot of strap -ons. Yeah. A lot of men now are letting women peg them. Pegging? Yeah. So pegging tell me, uh, I, know, I don't know about this pegging thing. It's when a woman puts on a strap on and she has anal sex with her husband. So how does that make her feel? Like how, what? How does it make her feel? I don't know. But I can tell you how it makes him feel. <laughs> it makes you him know, feel good. <laughs> I can just imagine just being behind my partner and just giving it to him. Like yeah, that's a powerful yeah. thing. That's, that, it's also the, the men's, um, Grafenberg spot or G spot is yeah. deep within, closer to his prostate. Right. So if you want to hit that, you got to get deep inside there, right? So, and some men um, get off on having bigger and bigger inside of them. So as they get trained, as they get trained, the exactly, trained asshole, right? <laughs> if a woman wants to give a man a, a really good orgasm, right? It's from the anus and also. With, uh, can can that be a little um, intrusive to the point where it's kind of a little confusing for the for the penis? Does the penis kind of go flaccid when you're what do you call it again? Having sex from pegging? Yeah, when you're pegging. Um, like can I you said, can you stay hard? It's just a practice, isn't it? Well, most men can probably decide when they're gonna have their go orgasm when they're getting pegged. Yeah. Um, it's not about their penis as much as it's about their anus. So right. they wait till the right moment. And then they can just do whatever they want, stroke right. it, um, um, have sex right after. But it's usually about getting to that spot, right? And which is deep inside a man's anus. So do you have like returning customers that always All do the they time. do they are they experimenting with different stuff every time That's they? That's the beauty of one hour delivery is they, they just love they go back onto the site and they look for different stuff and they want to they want to try something else because they know they can get it right now. Hey baby, I want to try this. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So what's what's the most popular toy? Uh, right here. That the, one. Uh, Hitachi Magic Wand. This really? right here has like a, a lot of power, and we sell a lot of them. Looks like a damn uh, kitchen appliance. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, but so, it, it has a little attachment here. So that's for okay. So that's for what? Tell me, explain. It's just okay, so foreign the, looking to me. The wand <laughs> itself is a massager. Okay, okay? so that massages. And you can use this on the clit if you want. So what they did you? was is they create yeah, Ooh. and they created these little ends for them now. Okay. So a whole bunch that are different shapes. And you just pop that on, and you can use that. That's any the most popular one, hey. This one right here, yes. So when that's the the little end is on, mm -hmm. put that on there. That's for the clit. Yeah, that's a little. That goes on there. there. Yeah. So okay, D but um, that's kind of big, Roberto. It's uh big. It's, okay. It just it's it's looks big, but I bet you it feels really good. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah. You have a lot of different ends you can choose yeah, from, you and can... then you have the ball itself. And... Yeah. The, um, that, this this ball is is a good for like a fisting. You know when you rotate the mm -hmm. fist, and then your your wrist is going to get tired, a right? little bit tired. So that's yeah. a perfect thing for yeah. that. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome with that. What about um, <laughs> what about um, chains? And do you have any? Do you do you sell those we kinds sell of things? We sell a lot of bondage stuff. Bondage um, stuff. Ball gags, chains. Ball gags. Uh, ball gags. What's yeah. that? Uh, if you, Tie it around the mouth and yeah. you put the ball gag in, and yeah. so they can't really talk as much. They're okay. sort of submissive at that point. Right. We, we have breathable ball gags. We have the ones that keep the mouth open with a, a ring. Right. We have um, electric stuff, like you have electric gloves, right. so you can feel the shock. Mm -hmm. Everything to help titillate and keep that excitement going. Yeah, you have to have stimulators. Are, you know, some what what about overstimulating when you're having sex? I mean. Overstimulating? Just, yeah, I've can you overstimulate? Well, <laughs> no, but like, let's say if you took the toys away. Well, you, you, these are things that you bring into the bedroom because you want to enhance the stimulation, but yeah. do you become dependent on I them? I think, for, I think for men that use anal toys, yeah. um, they're more private about it. Right. So they may become dependent on the toy okay. because they might not choose to use a real penis or have sleep with a man. They right. just want to have a toy. So right. Um, that's the way they might anally please themselves. Right. Uh, I believe that 
and this is again my opinion, that you can't sleep with everybody. No. So you should have a nice, you know, <gasps> little baggage of toys that you can help yourself have fun with. I think that you have to be comfortable with your with your prop. I mean, it's it's kind of like a relationship, right? Yeah. And, and you you find one particular one that you like and you use it. Exactly. I mean, it, and then. I, I mean, I'd shy away from anything that's too intrusive, you know. I mean, okay. yeah, d yeah. That I can't, I can't understand how this could actually be used other than just a visual thing, you know. <laughs> we saw but I think, them, though, I think I that texture and I think that vibration is important. Mm -hmm. Texture and vibration. There's like probably a whole trunk of stuff at your place, and I, we haven't even probably covered half of it. And we got to yeah, wrap. We got to wrap wrap things up next time. Yeah. Next time. We can really wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good having you here. Um, it was a pleasure. I was really itching Thank to you. speak with you because uh, <laughs> you were fun on the phone. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to meet you and just get into a conversation. Well, we'll have you next time maybe on You're the welcome. show. Thank you very awesome. much. All right. We'll see you. with Dr. Zen show my next guest Trevor Sherwin and we're going to be getting into talking about uh, photography and the art of seduction with photography nice to have you here thank you so um let's just uh what is the art of seduction with photography I mean is there an art to being seductive behind the camera oh yes there definitely is, is there but that, but that extends past just the photography standpoint too. right I mean that goes into just how you can carry yourself and things like that um, right you know, being seductive is kind of a mindset yeah. in a lot of ways. So when you're taking pictures, you take pictures, mm -hmm. do people come in and they want to learn how to be seductive, like practice with you so that they can get better <laughs> at it? No, actually uh, most of my clients, uh, I mean I got a wide range, mm -hmm. but you know, most of my clients are looking to do something they've never done before mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. They're also looking to explore a side of themselves cool. that they haven't really explored before and I mean, I guess, I mean, I, I focus on individuals and also couples, Okay. Um, so it's, it really does depend on the individual. Some people need to sell, use it for a self-esteem boost. Right. Some people just want to give it as a gift to a significant other. Couples want to explore a side of themselves they haven't explored before. So do you put something together or do they come with some kind of a plan? Oh, that there's they... a lot of planning that goes into a shoot yeah. with me. I mean, nobody just shows up and we just say, okay, let's go. Yeah. Um, there's quite a bit of back and forth leading up to the session. Right. Um, you know, I'll get them to either email me or use Pinterest to kind of send images along so that they can, right. uh, we can start planning this out. From everything from hair and makeup to lighting to okay. what we want to do, how far we want to take it. Right. Um, like there's a lot of planning that goes involved into one of the shoots. Just is there a lot of women? Is there single men? I mean, the vast together? majority of my client base is get... women. Yeah. Uh, individual women. Their next, I guess, the next biggest chunk would be couples, mm -hmm. and then I also do photograph individual guys too. What, so guys that want photographed for what reason? They want to learn how to what they look like after you sit the spread no, out. No, not go, so much that. I mean, wow, I look it's really hot. More in the gay community where oh, the yeah. guys do it. Um, it's it's weird because you know a woman can do a series of photos for her husband or boyfriend or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's great. Yeah. But when a guy does it for the girlfriend, it's kind of like really. <laughs> it's it's a yeah. weird it's a weird um, double standard yeah. in that respect. Yeah. So you don't get in any. Like raw, hardcore, raw photography. No, I don't, I don't shoot the like anything hardcore porn or anything like that. All of the stuff that I do is very, um, even if you're dealing with a couple, which is very intimate, mm -hmm. um, it's it's still more about the the lead up to it. Okay. It's it's you know, and we'll light things that are very suggestively lit instead right. of just saying, "Hey, here's all my bits." Um, right. It's not really about that. It's the imp it's the implied nature of where that's going. Give a bit it of mystery goes, to yeah, the it body. Yeah, the energy to that. Mm -hmm. What about um, building a portfolio over many years of your life? I mean, is that yeah, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's that's a fair question. I mean, a lot of uh, I've, like it's markers. Or yeah, sort a lot of. of people come in and they do have a milestone. Yeah. That milestone could be 
uh, I just lost a bunch of weight. Right. That milestone could be I have a wedding anniversary or something like that. Mm -hmm. It could be it's my 50th birthday. Right. You know, like it, 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 it could be a lot of different things that really generate that reason for coming in for a shoot. How long is a normal shoot? Um, all my shoots start as an hour. And people, most most of them end up there for two hours. So they'll, they'll pay a little extra and they do a session for two hours with more looks, more variation, right. and stuff like it's that. It's interesting to see uh, the pictures after. And mm -hmm. you, you can feel and play with the camera. But to actually rem remember what you were doing and then looking at the picture itself, yeah, you that's, may... That's actually why I kind of got into this. Because oh, yeah? you, you kind of see the transformation of somebody in a in a very positive way. It's really empowering for women, particularly. Absolutely. It's power, empowering for couples. And when couples too. come, they can make like a, a day out of it, like a yeah. date. You know, come and have like a two-hour or a three-hour shoot, and they can, you know, they're getting excited during this shoot, and then maybe they can go out for dinner after that, and then go get a hotel and just yeah, it's like... It's funny you mention that. I was Screw just the hell out of each other all night, ago. because they, they were built up yeah. through the whole shoot. I was you just know? told two weeks ago I was the best aphrodisiac ever. Really? Yeah, it was really funny. I mean, they cut the couple where we were doing the shoot, mm -hmm. and they were getting really into the moment, and I mean, I just kind of became the fly on the wall, essentially, just taking the pictures, and yeah. they were kind of doing their thing, and... They happened to be in a hotel room, yeah. so I just said, okay, guys, thanks, bye. Stepped out and uh, met up with them uh, you know, a few days later to do the reveal, and then, of yeah. course, they're just looking at the images. And yeah. going, oh, my God, that's awesome. So, we look different in a picture, don't we? Sure we do. I mean, do you, do, you have, do you encourage or give ideas with clothing or lingerie, or do you have yeah, that's props and things, the, that's couches and pillows and stuff like that? Oh, God, I got more stuff than you could ever imagine. So that, it's playful. It's kind of like yeah. a little playground isn't it? it it is and i mean being uh, expressive when we, when we figure out what the plan is do people like um do they if they're getting right into the moment and having their picture taken everything they're getting really erotic and sensuous and, and with their partner do they kind of lose sight that you're there in and, a couple session that happens very regularly and so how how far do they lose each other well how do they lose you like do they do they, it's they a fine line. I have to, oh, yeah, they'll start kissing. Do you have to touching, kind of stop them? Have to, I sometimes do. Really? Like, yeah, it's. Uh, you, have, you have to kind of direct the shoot. Yeah. Where it's going. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, you know, towards the end, once they've kind of built up that energy, usually it's good for me to just step away. So they and get have some fun. Oh, you do? You step yeah, away. So they get um, turned on. They want to start making love yeah, or something like that. Yeah, in my own studio, that doesn't happen. But if they have their own hotel room, I'll just step outside so Trevor uh, it was great having you on the show uh, talking about the art of seduction through photography and it's a great therapy thing that you do in your work and I think I commend you for that opening the doors for women to you know explore their body and to re-harness that feminine confidence it was great great topic great thank you you're welcome I'd like to see some of your pictures all right well I think we're gonna flash some up uh, yeah. as we're talking that'd be nice great okay great thank you <laughs>
to really give ourselves permission to explore the amazing, wondrous, creative body that we all have been given. Mm -hmm. And every every body is beautiful. Right. Apart from everybody is beautiful, every body is beautiful. Because you're totally unique. And so, so many people, you know, don't take the time to look in the mirror. Right. Admire themselves, touch themselves, just even just touch. Yeah. You know, um, one of your your guests earlier was talking about touch. Mm. And so self-pleasuring, it's not just about, you know, giving yourself an orgasm. It's about enjoying how your skin feels. Right. It's about it's about the seduction. Yeah. That, you know, you can talking be about in it. fantasy too with that. I mean, you close your eyes and pleasure yourself with your hand and you can envision your partner well, or your a brain, partner that you want to be with. Yeah, your brain is the strongest um, visualization tool that you have and I'm always amazed by how our body responds with visualization right right I mean the brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not real right and so all you have to do is creatively think in your mind what you want to create and boom your body's normally ready right right but it's about it's about dealing with the the shame um, that comes from certainly some dynamics within some families mm -hmm. and certainly out there in society as well. There's a lot of shame around, you know, masturbation or really enjoying this gift that we have. Yeah, where the heck does that shame come from? You know, it's we're old. naughty, naughty, you know, little yeah. Johnny, little Susie, don't touch yourself yeah. there. And yeah. I, we're, I think we're self pleasuring ourselves from the get go mm -hmm. as soon as we're able. I mean, it's well, innate. Are, our they, hands are yeah. down near yeah. our genitals, yeah. and naturally, our hands are just going to go to the first place, and that's just right there. So we've been, you know, that's it's natural. Mm -hmm. It's it's such an epidemic that people are not comfortable being with themselves. Mm -hmm. Period. Right. You know, we're distracted by so many things in our world, and so you know, we don't want to be alone, so we put the TV on, or we don't want to be alone, so we have a drink, or we don't want to be alone, and so we, you know, we're we're obsessed with other things. Right. And what about if we just took the time to just be with ourselves? Right. And really discover that soul connection yes. that, that that came into the world with us, and then we lost it when we were programmed and covered up with all these other things. And mm -hmm. so, to me, you know, I I call self pleasuring the pursuit of personal passion. Nice, because we all are passionate about different things in our lives. But what if we could be passionate about ourselves? We connect a, like the emotional connection that we get. We get to. We can decipher because we're not with anybody. So you know, if you're right. self-pleasuring yourself, you can feel like so satisfied just with that. And yeah. and at the same time, you can be emotional and feel that it could be a little guilt feeling. Oh my God, I, I shouldn't have done that. I should have saved it for my partner. Right. And there's all these like mixed things come with that. There's a lot of that, but that that's just rubbish. Like that's just rubbish. Yeah. Forget that. Put it right out of your head. Yeah. It's not anything to be guilty about. In fact, it's something that you. You're only going to get pleasure from it. Mm -hmm. Give up the old adage that that's not good for us. It is very good for I us. I think it's. I think I, I would encourage it because once we find out what we like and we're touching the way we want, then this is. I think we need to start to educate. I mean, right. ki kids at at the legal age. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To part of sex education mm -hmm. to have them know that it's okay because uh, the partner's not going to know. Right. Well, you can't expect a partner, a partner to know they don't what you like and how it's going to feel for you. Of course, over time within a relationship, you're going to get to know your partner. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really all about getting that connection with your partner at all different levels right? so that they then begin to understand and then sharing that experience with a partner. Right. right? Interesting. I mean, I... Do you self pleasure? I do. I do, but you know what? I, I I do it because it's more like it's not really um a place of pleasuring. It's more of a place of frustration because you know what I mean. Like to try to get your partner to do something a certain way, I would just rather just pleasure myself. Mm. There's that. That, that for, I have for a, me. It's more about spending time with me. 
Right. It's, it's more about giving myself the permission to be loving to myself. Right. Whether I want to dance to a great tune or I want to just walk around my house naked because I feel like but it. Watch yourself in the mirror dancing naked to some music is self-pleasure. It's totally no, it's self-pleasure. Not, you know, it's not all about anything yeah, to do with yeah. orgasm at all, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, one exercise that I love and look forward to is getting out of the shower and just putting cream on my body exactly. and just dancing with my hands rubbing the cream all over and I'm I'm like and slowing it down yeah and you know we live in a society where everything is so fast paced really fast you know, we move fast and we you know we text all the time and everything is fast 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 yep. and the thing about spiritual sexuality is is slow it right down yeah, so that you're really present with yourself you're and then you're present with your thoughts and you're present with your feelings right. and everything that's coming up. And then take that, take that experience that you've learned with yourself into the experience with a partner. Right. So that you really are connecting with your eyes, right. with your energy, with your senses, with your body, with yes. everything. It makes, it makes the experience so much richer. Yeah, I mean, self-pleasure. I think that masturbation is one. Self-pleasuring is a totally different topic. You know, so, I mean, self-pleasuring could lead to masturbation. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they're totally separate avenues, definitely. I think it's about allowing self-pleasure. Yep, yeah. whatever so, that pleasure whatever, is. Whatever that might yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, there's lots to talk about there with self, is. yeah, with you. <laughs> it's great having you on the show. Thank We've got to kind of close things up. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll get you back here again on the next round. Okay, great. Have you here. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Here we are, yeah. Great having everybody on the show tonight. I want to thank my sponsor, the owner of the Oasis uh, Aqua Lounge, Jana, and her um, employee, Fatima, for joining me on, um, on the show. And my second sponsor who came on, uh, Tan on the Run, Nicole Hyatt. It was really great having her doing a demo with an organic, sexy tan. And uh, my other guests were quite interesting tonight. Um, Philip Strapp. Um, really opened me up to understand a little bit about surrogate uh, partner therapy and uh, Bruce Anderson with his interesting orgasm meditation. Uh, tidbits of information there. Um, I learned a lot from him on that topic and uh, also want to thank um, um, Roberto Piazza who brought uh, playful little toys on and really um, is saying it's okay to use toys in the bedroom, um, you know, particularly in the heat of the moment when you just want to have that third stimulation in there. That was interesting having him on. Uh, Trevor Sherwin, I want to thank him as well for coming on the show and just in lightness about uh, the art of photography and how seductive and, and very uh, healthy it can be uh, to have your picture um, taken in a safe environment. and. Um, Gail Scott is always nice to have Gail on the show uh, just talking about self-pleasure you know not just self-pleasuring for uh, sex but just embracing that uh, pleasure in your body um, great having all my guests it was great uh, being here at the Oasis um, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a sexy new year and hopefully I can do another taping um, that's pretty much I want to thank all my guests out there who came and all my, you know, the people that they brought. And that was great being here, the Nikki Clark Network. <laughs> Always uh, love the little pull from the network, Nikki Clark, because she just keeps pushing me. And I hope she's going to push me again to do another episode next month. That'd be great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night.